Hey everyone, welcome back to Tip of the Week. In this week's video, I want to show you my five favorite filters for backyard wildlife. Whether you're outside photographing birds or photographing insects on some flowers, these five filters should help you out whenever you're editing your images inside On One Photo Raw 2020. Here inside Photo Raw, I have this hummingbird photograph here. And if I go into the develop tab, I don't have anything modified on it. It's the original image. We're strictly going to be modifying it using the effects tab. So inside of the effects tab, for my first favorite filter for backyard wildlife, it has to be dynamic contrast. I love dynamic contrast because it quickly allows me to modify the detail and the micro contrast across any of the parts of my image. So I'll add a filter here and I'll add dynamic contrast. With dynamic contrast, it's automatically applying all of the detail everywhere on my photo. Now I'm the type of editor that I like to go in and selectively apply my detail to specific parts of my image. And with this bird, I want to eliminate all of that detail around the bird and strictly apply it to him to make those textures pop out with the feathers and such. So in this dynamic contrast filter, I'm going to go into my masking options real quick. Now in my masking option, I can see that I have this mask view and it's showing me white. Well in masking, white reveals and black conceals. So I know that I have to remove some of this white from around the bird to conceal that filter and remove it from the background. So I'm going to go into my masking options and the first thing I'm going to do to strictly apply this dynamic contrast to my bird is I'm going to select invert. Now you can see that it changed my mask view to black. Well, remember, white reveals and black conceals, so now I don't have any of this dynamic contrast filter applied to my shot. So in this dynamic contrast filter, I'm going to go down here, and with the dynamic contrast area, I'm going to pull up on my small slider a bit, and that's going to pull out some of these smaller details and textures within this bird. Also in the dynamic contrast filter, you can modify things that involve the tonality of your image. So I'm going to head down in this tone area and I'm going to increase my vibrance a bit. That's going to boost the color. I'm going to pull back on my blacks a hair. That's going to add some contrast. I'm going to increase these whites a bit and that's going to boost some of this light within this bird and bring out some of those natural tones that were there when I shot this photo. I'm also going to head down here and I'm going to pull back on the highlights a bit and that's just going to make sure there's not too strong of blowouts on my image. I might pull it back up a little bit actually. So now if I go in here with my masking brush selected, if it's not selected for you, you can hit B on your keyboard. I'm going to head up to my top tool modifier bar here and with my mode, I know I need to be set to paint in because I'm painting in this dynamic contrast into my bird. So I'll just hold down shift, I'll hit X on my keyboard. That switches my mode from paint in to paint out. And my brush size is at 600, which looks pretty good. It's about the size of the bird here. I'll leave my feathering at 100. That's going to keep me my nice soft brush edge. And then I'm going to keep my opacity at 100, making sure that I paint in all of this filter. I can always lower the opacity of the filter after the fact. So let's just paint it in at 100%. So now I'm just going to head down here and I'll just paint this on to this bird. And you can see it's just making the textures pop, it's making the colors pop, and it's really livening up this area of the bird. Now with the bracket keys on my keyboard, I'm just going to lower the brush size a bit and kind of get more of the smaller areas around this bird. I'll lower it quite a bit even still and just get a little bit of the beak like that. Perfect. So now if we go over to our dynamic contrast filter, I'm going to hit view on my mask. And you can see with this five-year-old drawing of this hummingbird that it is applying the detail strictly to the hummingbird and nowhere in the background because white reveals and black conceals. So now if we go back and I'll view this, I'll just turn this off and on does a great job of only applying that to the bird here. Now let's move on to my second favorite filter for backyard wildlife, and that's the glow filter. Now the reason that I love the glow filter is because I can apply the glow filter to backgrounds and foregrounds on my images to either dim them down or brighten them up. In this case, I wanna dim down this background behind this hummingbird, so I'm gonna, 
So I'm going to head over to my effects tab. I'm going to add another filter and I'm going to add the glow filter. Now with this glow filter, I'm going to choose my darker preset here. And with that darker preset, you can see it darkens up the scene a bit and it also adds a little bit of glow on it to soften things up. Well, I'm going to head down to my amount and I'm going to pull that up all the way to 100. And then I'm going to pull up my halo a bit to about 30. So if I turn this off and on, obviously it's really intense, but we're going to mask it out from the bird using the same mask that we used earlier. So let's go back into our dynamic contrast filter. I'll go into my masking options, I'll copy this mask, I'll go to my glow filter, I'll go into the masking options of that glow filter, and I'll just paste that mask. Now because I pasted that mask, it's just using the white areas that we used with the detail. So we need to flip it. So we'll just head over to invert, click that, and now the glow filter is applied to the backdrop of the bird. So now if I play with the opacity here of my glow filter, I can make it a little bit more natural, like that. And I could even probably lower that halo a bit. The halo is actually kind of that glowy softness or fuzziness that you see in the glow filter. I think that looks pretty good right about there. So if I turn this off and on, it's doing a great job of just dimming down that backdrop and accentuating our really nice subject here. On to the next filter for backyard wildlife, we're going to be using the curves filter. Now the curves filter has always been one of my favorite filters in Photo Raw because it allows me to modify all of the different tones in my image and I can also modify the RGB channels individually. So I'm going to add a filter and I'll add the curves filter. Now, if you're not familiar with the tone curve, it's really simple to use. This bottom left corner here, this is the blacks of your image. So if I pull this to the right, I'm going to increase my blacks and add a ton of blacks in my shot. If I pull this straight up, it's going to remove all of the blacks from my image and add sort of a faded matte look. Now, in between this bottom left area and the top right corner of the curves are all of the different tones of your shot. So on the bottom left we have blacks. As we move up we have our shadows. We then have our midtones in the middle here. We have our highlights and then our whites to the top right. So if you have an underexposed image like this for example, you might want to head down to your shadow tones here, drop a point, and then you could pull up on it a little bit and that will reveal some of those shadow tones on your photo. Now the reason I love the curves filter is because when you're modifying shadow tones or midtones, it creates a curve of tonality so that it blends in more naturally and it doesn't look as weird or HDR-y as it does if you just pull up on one specific tone in your shot. Now with this tone curve, you can always go in and add different points. So if I want to add a point here, I can just drop this down and pull down on my midtones or I can boost them up. And I'm just going to actually add a point right here, and that's going to pull back on some of those bright highlights a bit, right about there. Now that I have this curve here, if I turn this off and on, you can see it's really adding in a lot more light so that I can see more details in my squirrel picture. Well, besides modifying the tonality in your photograph, you can also use the curves filter to modify some of the colors. So in this shot, it looks a little bit too green. So let's head into our green channel here, and I'll just click a point in my midtones, and then I can just pull this down a little bit, and that will remove some of the green from my midtones. Now keep in mind that these RGB channels are really, really sensitive. So if I pull this down just a little bit, you can see it adds in blue and red really quickly. So just be careful when you're modifying these, they can get really intense really fast. So now that I brought in a little bit of that red and blue to my midtones, I'm going to head back up to my blue channel and I'm going to add in a little bit more blue just to cool things down a bit. Right about there. 
maybe a little less. Perfect. So now if I turn this tone curve off and on, you can see it's done a whole lot to our image in just one filter here. And besides the tone curve, another filter that I like to use for backyard wildlife is the sun flare filter. The sun flare filter allows me to add on sun flare overlays onto my shot to bring in real life sun to my image. So I'll just add a filter and we'll add the sun flare filter. And the sun flare is really easy to use. Basically in here you have your type, which is either sun flare, bokeh, or sun star, and then you get to choose your texture. So these are all your different sun flares. I typically stick with this sun flare right here, the basic preset one. And then I'll head down to my transform area and I'll flip it. Now it's on the right side so it acts like the sun is coming to the right of the scene. Now whenever you're using the sun flare filter, there's a couple things that you should dial in on the filter for your image. One of those things is the saturation and also the brightness. If the sun flare looks too strong, it's going to look unnatural. And if it's the wrong color, it's going to look even more unnatural. So in this instance, it matches the color quite well, but I don't need that yellowish overlay. And I also don't need this that bright. So I'm going to head to my tone and color here. I'm going to lower the saturation just a bit. And then I'm going to lower the brightness quite a bit as well. Just like that. So if I turn this off and on, I still have a sun flare on my image. It's just not as intense. Now just like with our dynamic contrast and our glow filter, we're going to selectively apply the sun flare so that it blends in more naturally with our image. So I'm just going to be on my keyboard here. I'm going to head up to my top tool modifier bar and I'm going to set my mode to paint out. That's because I want to remove the sun flare filter for specific parts of my image. So I'll just increase my brush size with the bracket key on my keyboard, the right bracket. And then I'm going to head up to my opacity and I'm going to lower it to about 20. Now with my opacity at 20, I'm just going to go in here and I'll just brush on little brush strokes. And that'll remove that sun flare filter from the face of my squirrel here. I can also probably remove it from this tree right there. There we go. So now if I head over to the sun flare filter and I turn it off and on, it looks a lot more natural and it's not covering up our squirrel's face. My last favorite filter for backyard wildlife is the sunshine filter. Now the sunshine filter is a great filter for incorporating a little bit of a contrast boost in your shot but you can also use it to subtly boost your color. So let's add a filter and I'll add the sunshine filter. Now sunshine technically goes in and it darkens your dark areas on your shot and it brightens up your midtones and your highlights, acting as a sunshine look. Well with sunshine, I typically go in here and I'll use the natural preset and I'll go to my warmth, I'll increase the warmth a little bit and I'll increase the amount. Now with the glow slider here, you can incorporate more of that fuzzy soft look, but I don't really want that unless I'm adding the glow filter. Now with this sunshine filter, if I turn this off and on, it does a whole lot to the tonality of my shot. It brightens things up, it darkens things down. All I really want in this sunshine filter, however, is to modify the color in my shot. Well to do that, I can use a blend mode. So let's head into our blending options here in this sunshine filter with this gear icon and I'll head into my mode and I'll just choose color. So now the sunshine filter is only applied to the colors in my photograph and it's not going to modify the tonality. So it won't boost any highlights or modify my shadows. So now in the sunshine filter, if I modify the amount, you can see it's subtly taking those yellows and those greens and really making them pop. If I want to modify that a bit, I can modify this warmth slider down here and I can use this to clean up this area at the top that's a little bit muddy down with yellows. So now if I turn the sunshine filter off and on, see how it's boosting up these colors in here and it's also whitening this top area a bit. So if I zoom in here to this B a bit more, I'm just going to head down to the saturation slider and I'm just going to turn it up all the way. See how it's really boosting these colors? 
So those are my five favorite filters for backyard wildlife. Thanks so much for watching Tip of the Week. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and stay updated whenever we drop new videos and new content. Stay safe out there and have a great rest of your week.